Buenos días, Buenos Aires. Uh, como vos sabés, no soy brasileño, pero yo no hablo español, mi portugués es una mierda. So, I'm going to give this presentation in English. Uh, if you're way more comfortable talking English than broken Spanish. Uh, we're going, uh, I'm going to talk uh, about old school hacking, like the presentation, as you can see, it's name is uh, the way back machine, old school hacking. And like, you guys be wondering, what the hell is old school hacking? What is this guy going to talk about here? Uh, I'm going to talk about ancient uh, ways to breach into computer systems. Uh, many of the methods described here were developed back in the 80s. Yet, uh, we're going to show that they're, they're too effective. Uh, the, the, the mystery of this presentation, it was like, uh, I was watching the, you know, the movie War Games, like such a, a classic. And after uh, watching it for the, I don't know, thousandth time or something, I realized, that, oh, like, what if these things, they still work today? And you're going to see the rest of here. Here are our agenda, uh, the main goals for uh, of this presentation. Uh, we're going to talk about word dialing, X-25 hacking, uh, a little bit about depth or diving and social engineering. Here the then the acknowledgments, reference links, and all the stuff. Oh, main goals. Uh, the objective of this presentation is to approach some of these forgotten, but important, topics regarding computer security. And like, the, how can I say, the, the real, the actual main goal is to satisfy nostalgic guys just like me uh, with these old school tricks and make hackers and system administrator happy with real stories and incidents as well. And show this so-called obsolete hacking techniques are not that obsolete, they still work. And to demonstrate the same links, uh, I mean, the same weak links of 20, 25 or 20 years ago, they still exist nowadays. Uh, we're done with the search for Protovision. If you've seen the movie War Games, you remember Protovision is the fictional company, uh, like the game company that Dave Lightman tries to break, break into, but he reaches the no red computer and, well, uh, War dialing is the automated process of dialing sequentially or randomly large blocks of telephone numbers. And its main purpose is to find modems and, and that, how can I say, other telephonic equipment, telephone equipment, sorry, attach it to the other end of the line. Uh, okay. And it's considered obviously since the early 90s. <laughs> uh, initially, it was used to look for PAP access uh, with default passwords or with no passwords at all. Its main purpose was to find the, those the systems that acted like diverters. And uh, a system that acted like diverters, I don't know if you know. If you know. Uh, like it gave you uh, a dial tone, so you can you could make uh, free phone free phone calls, especially long distance calls. And this phone scanning became a phenomenon back in, uh, actually, after the movie War Games. It was released in 1983. And I think this movie was like, the movie created computer hacking, at least for lots of many people. Uh, it was a favorite game of ancient hackers, just like me, kind of just kidding. And the hardcore freaking is a direct consequence of our dialing. Uh, by the hardcore freaking, I mean, like actual phone freaking, not uh, whistling on the phone to make freak phone calls, just like Captain Crunch. I mean, really hacking phone switches and hardcore stuff. Uh, is it okay talking English like this, this fast? Can you guys understand? Okay. Uh, some legal questions. In some states of the United States, I think it's in Colorado, where that is considered a crime as trespassing because they say, uh, if you don't have the intent to communicate using a phone system, you're breaking the law. Like, that's quite weird. Uh, I don't know. Uh, apparently in Brazil, it, there's no law forbidden. Actually in Brazil, there's no law at all. And who the hell cares? Uh, 
uh, more generally itself, it cannot be considered a, as harassment or disturbance because the number is dialed only once. So your phone, the uh, phone of the, the other guy at the guy at the other end, it will ring only once. So it's not a disturbance. Okay, you wake up him at 1 a.m. or something, but now it's okay. Only one ring. And advanced phone switches, they're capable to detect war dialing activity. Thank God my, uh, this, this, the exchange that serves my area, it doesn't. Uh, famous incidents of World War Dialing, it was the slingshot for the Yahoo defacement back in 1997. At least it's the gossip in the underground, it's not, it's not official. Bring Bali has it back. Uh, the worst country airport and nearby residences Communications shut off, like, uh, sorry, cut off in 1997, too. It was a year of more dialing, probably. <laughs> and, uh, for resident access to high voltage, high voltage power management system in Oakland, in California, and probably many others, but I have just listed these ones, like, the ones that I remember. Uh, we're dialing in Brazil, tools and hardware using. For tools, I use a tone lock by Mano Threat and Motion Mass. It's the best word dial software by far. Even better than commercial ones, the fancy ones with all these fancy options. No, forget about them. Tone lock will get the job fine. And Telemates by Red River Software as a, a terminal, can I say, a terminal software. So it, it could be hyper terminal, but like it's more old school. So I decided to use it. And hardware, I use it uh, like my shitty computer, uh, but uh, in 486 it could do the same task without any problems, like running POS and 6 dot or something. It would it would work fine. Uh, I use it uh, in a lot of fun line, of course. No, not of course. Uh, you, we could do it with ISDN line, but it's another story. And uh, US robotics. Like a very, 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 very professional and good modem. This one is West Robotics School here, V everything. Because this modem, uh, is, as I said previously, it's a very professional modem. So it's, uh, it's able to detect all kinds of tones, and it's able to detect carriers, it's able to detect loops, it's able to detect uh, if, the, if the other end is busy, if it's ringing, like it does everything, not but um, and compare it to to these these PCI modems, these cheap ones, they suck so bad for for doing what I mean. I'll tell you later why. Uh, the methodology, um, I I changed my my service to like a minute rate because it provided free call throughout. Uh, like from uh, 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. So I harassed so many people. And common numbers, uh, they have 20, uh, 20 seconds timeout and a ring out of three, uh, yes, a ring out, ring timeout of three. It means, but it worked only for, for the US robotics modem. The PCI one I was using previously, uh, it just ignored this ring out. I don't know why. No, I know why, because it was cheap. And top three numbers, they had a timeout of 40 seconds. Oh, why 40 seconds? Because, of course, top three numbers, they are bigger. So they take a little bit longer to dial, and the, like, the switch communication or something, it, it delays a little bit more. So uh, 40 seconds timeout, it's OK. It's OK to perform it. Uh, with a five as a ring out value. And the maximum dialing speed was set uh, was set for common numbers. It, it, it didn't work for top three numbers. I mean, the maximum touchdown register speed, but almost maximum it worked fine. If I uh, if you set it up in the maximum, uh, you get a fast busy sign out. So I just uh, delayed a little bit, but it will work fine. Uh, here is an attack scenario for a common attack scenario in war dialing stuff. I think it's self-exploitative or something. Uh -huh. You can get it. 
uh, the attacker tries to communicate, uh, for example, you have the internet, you have a router, a firewall, but the attacker is, uh, is using the PSTN, I mean the phone, the phone system, to modem to communicate to the server. And he's going to bypass like the whole uh, firewall and other stuff infrastructure. Uh, as some results, uh, I got lots of wide open routers, uh, routers with default passwords or no passwords at all sometimes. And lots of PPP connections that uh, when most of them did you require uh, did you require any kind of authentication? And some of them led me straight forward into uh, into internet. Like it's straightforward, but I mean it's, I mean straightforward. Like you get an IP address, you can ping. Uh, I, I mean you get an internal IP address, you can ping machines and all the stuff. I got some phone switches as well, faxes and order telephone stuff, lots of login prompts, and one was, was very, very interesting. It was a state run lottery in a big state in, in, in Brazil, and the machine, it had some kind of a, a banner, like blah, 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 dot lottery, I won't say its name, dot com, and the machine wasn't accessible to the internet, but you can reach it by modem. Wants to be a millionaire. Uh, I mean, for a BDS, they're very, like they're very rare in Brazil now. Uh, as a picture wo is worth a thousand words, here's the like the uh, screenshot for a telephone switch. It's a vector uh, model. It's a national switch. And as far as I can tell, as far as I can tell, this switch uh, it controls a uh, one ten thousand phone lines or something in, in a very big state in Brazil. It's, uh, I think it, it, it controls store free lines there. But uh, no, intrus no intrusive techniques were applied. Uh, I'm not a criminal. <laughs> no, believe me, I didn't break into it. Uh, what is it to a threat? In many, in many cases you can find like, some like prompt telephone switches which are very, very nice, play with. Uh, they are observed with weak passwords, voicemail boxes, lots of unattended and legacy systems like VMS, like, man, like Linux running kernel 2.0 or something, um, misconfigured routers, faxes, PAV access, ISDN, and lots of weird telephone equipment. Internal computers not reachable from, from the internet Confidential and internal numbers as well. And the future trends of our dialing, if there is a, if there is a future for it. Uh, VoIP, VoIP based for dialing tools such as this one, this, this one's described here. Uh, I work by WB, uh, actually it performs common or dial too with phone, but it has the capability of using IAX2 and all these VoIP protocols. Skydiver by Legion, it's, um, I don't know, it's some kind of, not a plugin, but uh, it uses this Skype API, it's written in C Sharp, it uses this Skype API to perform uh, for more dialing. And this can be used online with ISDN devices. These softwares, I never use them because I don't have the money to afford ISDN. Um, the Steam app and Pulse, both made by German companies or German, German people. Because probably because ISDN is pretty cheap there, uh, it's not a game in Brazil. And as counter measures, do not allow internal numbers to die, like inter uh, sorry, external numbers to die into your numbers. Like there is some kind of, at least I saw some commercial telephone firewalls. Probably, yes, they are commercial. I don't know how much they cost, but. There are these kind of firewalls for telephones. Too. Record all your incoming calls. Turn on dial back feature on modems that support you. Like it's gonna dial back to a fixed number. When when it rings, it will dial back to a fixed number. So, well, actually, dial back schemes they can be bypassing, but it's not that easy. 
and I, I never did it. And some features in PBX so they can detect scanning. There is some kind of uh, PBX signature. I mean, uh, there is some kind of software that can analyze the software, uh, the PBX logs to detect word dialing, word dialing activity. Uh, use the most mysterious banners or revolve them. Like, do not greet the attacker. Hey, leave my system, blah, blah, blah. blah. No. Uh, if there is really, really, really the need to leave your modems available to anyone, make sure your passwords are not free to be defeated. Action 5 will play around with fact switch network. Uh, Action 5 is a set of threat calls developed back in the 60s by some company, rent company, rent call or something. It's similar using two model using PSTMs, I mean, the, the common telephone system. It was the first kind of network to reach the global scale, but it lost its popularity when the internet like, came, became mainstream. Uh, it is still in use, in use by large, uh, large corporations and governments. And yes, it's true. Many governments, especially in third world countries, uh, I mean, in all countries like Russia and the stuff, they use they're still using a lot action five. Uh, here's a little bit of information, a uh, little information, uh, uh, basic information about uh, about them action five. The communication is based on those circuits. Uh, they can be switched or permanent. Uh, the, the the main difference between them is that <coughs> sorry, uh, is that uh, is the signaling. Uh, the permanent doesn't need uh, a call. Uh, how can I say? It? it doesn't need the call signaling. Uh, what the other one it needs. It's the, the basic. It's the basic. It's the main difference between them. And protocol is connection oriented, so uh, communication is reliable. And uh, each subscriber is assigned to a network user address, a unique with logic channels. This network user address is equivalent to the. IP address in IP basic networks, in internet networks. And any leads like network user identification. And it's equivalent to the user password pair on dialog systems on PPP. And if they are using on X28 path. Billing uh, is based on the amount of traffic transferred. And sometimes reverse charge, like who is being called and who pay, uh, pay the call. Sometimes it's possible. Maximum transmission speed is, I cannot say numbers in English, I'm sorry. Uh, specific platform. 64, yes. Uh, I can, uh, one, 128 bytes. <laughs> I cannot say numbers in English, it's like. Uh, today to know, don't, uh, today to know, don't, uh, two other networks, you need to prepare a zero or a nine before the before the Lua with the technique and other stuff. Usual facilities provide reverse charging, minimonics, profile, pet profile, and other stuff. Uh, here is the, the core network elements. Data terminal equipment, it's like the endpoint of the network. By endpoint, I mean your computer, your terminal. The data, yes, and the other, the other end terminal as well. The data circuit terminal equipment, or DCE, is the equipment used in the actual communication. By meaning modems, like packet switching modems and routers and other stuff. And packet disassembler assembler is a full feature protocol converter. By this, I mean, it's some kind of, how can I say? It integrates uh, a computer that doesn't have X25 capabilities or bad software within, within uh, not within, but with the X25 network. Uh, the, lots of numbers, X, uh, I don't know, address and format for X25 network. Uh, we got the Denik, uh, it's data. I can remember uh, this acronym, 
what it means, but it can be split up, split it up in in two others, call it the DCC, the Data Country Code, uh, seven two four. It's the Brazil, the, the Brazilian Code, Data Country Code, in international networks. I don't, I don't remember the, I don't know the the code for Argentina. Oh, cool. I, I, I only know it's your network name is RPAC. Is it RPAC? It's all I, it's all I know about, about I think, five networks here. And you've got a network identifier. This one is to is for RENPAC. But unfortunately, all the others are dead and gone in Brazil. We've got only RENPAC. We've got a CPAC uh, run by Telemark, boy. But it has been like swallowed like, into RENPAC now. And that's the, the terminal number, the RENPAC passport center. Like this, just for, to illustrate. And uh, here's like uh, the, the call setup, uh, how, it, how it's performed in switched, vir in switched virtual circuits. Uh, so like, uh, you make a call request and the router says, oh, incoming call, oh, okay, I want to accept the call, then it connects the call. Hey, in call clearly, you know? <laughs> like it's a, it's a split thing. Okay. <laughs> 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 and you can you can make like a subnet in Action Farm Network as well. So like there's not much to say. Like they're so beautiful, you, you, you can understand perfectly. So uh, it's connected to the to the uh, Action Five Cloud, and connects to router and the uh, I mean yes the subnet the subnet computers. So there's not much to say about it. And the action found bad messages. There are tons of messages that say uh, the number you're trying to reach is busy. No, it's accepted the connection. No, there was an error. And they are very, very valuable information uh, for the for people that want to perform scanning on action find networks. And how to access packet switched networks? Uh, mainly, uh, we, we can have, we can access them through leased lines, a like direct direct connection to an X25 pad. Uh, or it's always identified it's, uh, with uh, password like. Can have uh, public dial-up access. Public dial-up access. You dial into the X28 pad, just like. Just like when we exit internet back in, I don't know, a few years ago, you dial into something, uh, you give out your password, and you're, you're logging a password, then it's a text KT. It can be, a, it can be identified or not, actually. But no identified connections, they, they lack some, some, some capabilities. Uh, I'll tell later. And X25 over IP. It's XLT. It's on referred on this RFC. I cannot say the number. And in theory, uh, the the routers XLT capabilities they they can be reached from the internet without any problems. And the security slacks. There's no authentication at all. So you can craft your own X, XLT your own XLT scanner. I can remember the port right now. If I remember, I won't say. I cannot say the number. But uh, uh, so, like, uh, so you can craft your your own port scanner for XLT and craft your own like, your own XLT software to communicate on XM5 networks, and without any costs, any telephone pulses, and it's cool because I spent so much money doing this shit. Uh, a little bit like security consideration action five networks. Threats to PSNs they have been they have been neglected for years. And security aspects were, were not involved were not involved, sorry. Uh, involved in the days of its peak of, of popularity, when people didn't have much security in mind back in the eighties. It was working fine, okay. 
And network tapping, information traps in networks are subject to many types of attacks like data forgery, tampering, and all stuff. And gauge dropping forgery, they can be applied nearly to every network medium, and it happens to X25 as well. There are lots of tools to perform sniffing on an X25 network. Well, not lots of tools. I think Wireshark does it well. And other proprietary commercial software, they can do it like, perfectly. Uh, network user identification brute forcing. Uh, to travel through all networks, including international ones, an attacker, uh, he must be identified. As I said previously, uh, users that are not identified on X25 networks, they can do, they can perform reverse calling, but reverse calling and local, local calling only on the network you're connected in. And uh, if you have, if you are authenticated, you can, of course, take in consideration all the security mechanisms. You can dial into every every X25 node in the world. And brute force attacks are noisy, they're known, elegant, yet they are the most reasonable manner and the most popular manner, manner to hack NUIs. And there are some new crackers. I think Looking Hacker by THC, Van Houser, THC, it does well. Uh, there is a software called X25 Brew by a node, uh, some guy from Italy. Or do it yourself. You can craft one using telemate scripting or something. Some Hortelix or Minicom, it, it worked fine. Uh, X25 hacking, like scanning for valid new uh, NUIs, it's the most popular way of finding potential targets. There, here are some tools. The, the famous X ADM X25 by Anti Love, and the other ones they are they are not that well known, but uh, this one's the most popular um, in the computer underground. And Grass Minimonics names are quite well popular as well. Minimonics, it's um, how can I say it's it's a minimonic. <laughs> I don't know. Like you, for example, you don't need to to remember the. The whole Lua for some node, it has some kind of alias. So you dot, I don't know, Echo Party, you will dive into, uh, into the Echo Party node on the X25 network. And exploitation concepts, they are a little bit different, but things seem, seem to be changing. What, uh, what I'm saying is that there is no TCPAP stack, for example. There is no, oh, I've got my killer Apache zero day exploit. And I'm going. I'm going to target him. Like I'm going to access, uh, send him my my evil payload and hack his Apache. Or I'm going to uh, I'm going to brute force his SSH. No, man, forget about it. All you have is only one, like only one communication channel. But uh, it's not like this. So, like the most the most thing you have is like only a prompt or something. There's no, there's no other ports and all stuff. Forget about this concept, this TCP/IP concept of uh, not, not this TCP/IP, but this, yes, this internet concept of exploiting things. But th things seem to be changing. I I'll talk about about it later. And as counter measures, disable reverse charging. You can slow down some of the attackers, not all of them, of course. Especially the Russians, they're they're doing so many scans using reverse charging. Encrypt your connection to prevent data tampering, forgery, and all this nasty stuff that, that can happen in network mediums. Enable closed user group on the network. Closed user group is some kind of, how can I say, it's a, it's your telco, it's your telephone carrier, fire enforced, firewall enforcing, no, tele, telecom, Enforcement firewall. Sorry, it says which DTEs are are authorized to communicate to you. So it's some kind of firewall for X five network. And the only present recommendation: make sure the passwords are not weak, because most of them, uh, most of the time, you get only a password prompt. So yes, make sure your passwords are not weak. Uh, due to its lack of popularity, security is often neglected while it's still trapped. So, some critical infrastructure coordination systems are accessible through X25 networks, 
And most of the attackers play around are not ordinary script keys. So be aware. Oh. I'm really sorry uh, about, there is no banner, there is no, I mean, there is no screenshot, sorry. I got, I got some of them, but I'm, I'm going to update these slides and then send to, to the organization of the conference with a few banners or something of some, uh, not government stuff, some government banners, in Brazil, they're still using it. Don't forget, I think, like, uh, there's only one slide about it. It's the author of rummage through trash cans looking for valuable information. Sometimes you can find manuals, sometimes you can find internal manuals, notes, and other stuff. And people think, no, it, it doesn't happen, man. Like, I worked in a company in, like, two years ago. I won't say its name, of course. And there were lots of papers about projects and like, very important things of the company, of the project, uh, software they, they made, and like, man, the security was lame. Anyone could could uh, uh, enter like, no, I'm the pizza guy. They, they could enter and grab all the papers on, on the desks, for example, and no one would, would, would notice it. And also forgotten has been used by hackers and numerous explorators. Um, <coughs> Uh, paper shredding is the best countermeasure against it. And uh, here's uh, a little phrase, uh, a quote, sometimes the greatest treasures are found beneath piles of trash. I was about to go trashing in the central office, but my mate didn't go with me. So I didn't, sorry. Uh, social engineering and password. Password, yeah. Blessing. Yeah. I like all tricks for new dog. Social engineering is nothing but tricking someone. Tricking someone to do something in your favor. It's, it's not much, like everyone here knows about social engineering. And the human factory plays a key role on computer security as well. And the human stupidity, there is no bad for it. Uh, it's widely used by hackers, but also by fraudsters and other kind of criminals, for example, like Frank of Mayor Jr., like the Cat Me If You Can movie. Uh, social engineering was fundamental on most of Mitnick's and Kevin Poole's and hacks, for instance. Conclusions. For government hacking techniques, they may look updated and inefficient. However, after a thousand of telephone proposals, and it costed me lots of money, uh, this presentation showed it, it's not true. There are still many mission-critical systems lying around on these kinds of obscure networks, Networks, they are supposed to be secure only because they are isolated from the internet world. And most of, most of the systems are very old ones. So like, you can get your, you can go to the archive.org, grab some exploit on, I don't know, rootshell.com, like a 1998 exploit, and hack it. And old school hacking is not still only simple, but amazingly effective. It works, trust me. And the software model don't hack kid. And listen to Michael Jackson watching the Goonies or something to get into the mood of the age. <laughs> uh, some acknowledgement, reference, links, and blah blah blah. Saludos a los hermanos de Necoparty, Leonardo, Federico, Francisco, Hiba. Atacentisete for being the. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding, I'm a big fan. For being the, the inspirational soundtrack. Marvin Madsen for his like designing this beautiful slide for me. <laughs> Rodrigo, where are you, man? Rodrigo, Domingo Montanaro, Felipe Valetto, who is not here, and you would see guys and all the guys that came, uh, other people that came from Brazil with me, like the Tory here to Echo Party. The guys of the Department Magazine staff, the former members of the RFDS Labs and Godfall. Fabio Optic for being my old school consultant. <laughs> <laughs> And Irvatan, Paolo for keeping the old school alive, Robert Conley, Julio Alto, and Tiago Sonsan, probably some of you know him, Raul Chiesa for, uh, for sharing some ideas with me and his great paper and presentations on X25 security, and for you, to you guys, muchas gracias for your patience.
questions? Now it's time to bash me. When you say it still works, how many hits did you get? How many what? Hits. How many hits? hits? So many. Uh, I've got a very large log file from Tom Lock. And a friend of mine, he has uh, lots, lots of FM5 scans. Like, and trust me, there are many things. I don't know how many hits. Honestly, I don't know. It's not that it's not that many compared uh, like ten years ago, but there are still many hits. Anyone else? Questions? Anyone else? Are you guys still sleepy? <laughs> so it's okay. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias.